Well, I did something stupid again. I bought a 98 Tiger Shark TSR 1000. It's just like the 97 that I restored in the last YouTube video series. But as you can see, the body's in much better shape. And you'd think I would learn from the 97 that maybe it wouldn't be such a good idea to buy one that's not running. But uh, I paid 200 bucks for this one and thought I would have some fun with it. You know, obviously it's in a lot better shape. I mean, look at the body. Nice red paint, not pink. Decals are in nice shape as well. I actually prefer the graphics on this one over the 97. I mean, it just looks uh, tougher to me. More, more racy. If that's even a word. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's pretty nice. I mean, of course, it's got some some small dings here. As you can see, but it's really pretty clean. It's got some damage back here. Previous owner, I guess, said he hit a, a rock is what he said. I don't know how you do that kind of damage going backwards, but he did. That's what he told me. Gauges are in nice shape too. The needles still have the nice orange amber color on them. Bottom of the hall is still pretty nice. Not all banged up like my other one. And even the seats in really nice shape. So you're probably asking yourself, what's my plan with this one? Well, let me show you. So this is the engine that shares the same 999cc Suzuki engine that's in the 97. It's 115 horsepower. And the mag cylinder here seemed to be running pretty lean. And of course it destroyed the piston. But the other two are in nice shape. Now this is how I got it. It was all torn apart like this. So my my hope is I'll throw the cylinder heads back on these two cylinders back there. And hopefully we'll have some nice compression since the cylinders and pistons look to be in pretty decent shape. And if that's the case, if I get good compression out of these rear cylinders, then I'm, I'm going to try and buy a used, a good used, cylinder and piston combo for this mag cylinder bolt it on go through the fuel system do some other service as well and hopefully i'll have a good running jet ski for not a lot of money but you know that we all know how that played out on the last one it didn't work out so well i think the budget on the 97 was 350 dollars and roughly 900 bucks later it's now running pretty darn good so first thing i'm going to do is uh, let's throw these cylinder heads on and pray to the tiger shark, shark gods that uh, we've got some good compression back there. I've had these O-rings in the freezer for a few hours now. Let's see if they fit a little bit better. These are pretty stretched out. But as long as we get a good seal on that inner one, we should be okay. Because we're just doing a compression check. Yeah, this one is just... It's gone. It's a goner.
let's see if it passes the rolling over by hand method. Yes, all right. It's getting hard. Don't really need to test the mag cylinder. I just don't want it flinging a bunch of oil everywhere as I crank this engine over. So I'm gonna throw the head on it. Okay, we'll do the center cylinder first. Fingers crossed, man. Looking for 130 pounds or better. Let's hope we get lucky. Oh, look at that. It's a thing of beauty. Middle cylinders at about 140 PSI. Let's hope we get lucky on the PTO one as well. Come on. Yeah, that one's a little bit lower. It's about 135. And that's with the crappy O-rings on there. I don't know if it sealed perfectly or what. They're in pretty bad shape. Let's give it another shot. Yeah, again, about 135. So we got 135 pounds of pressure in the rear, 140 in the center. Not bad. So maybe this motor might be savable after all. I'll go ahead and we'll pop off this jug and cylinder head and see what the crank looks like. But it seems to be spinning just fine. Okay, I got the exhaust manifold out of there. Came out pretty easy. And the next thing I want to do is actually remove these carburetors, the intake manifold, and the reed valves. I just want to get all that stuff removed first because if I remove the jug and then remove the carburetors, I'm worried that any type of junk that's plastered all over these hoses, dirt, grime, oil, all that buildup, I don't want it to fall into the bottom of the crankcase. So I'm going to get started on getting these carburetors removed and then we'll remove the jug. Okay, ready to start removing some carburetors. First we're going to undo the choke.
I'm going to replace all the fuel lines, so I'm just going to cut them. I mean, these things are pretty old. It's a good peace of mind to go ahead and freshen them up. So I have the carbs all loose. The only thing left holding it on is the choke cable and the throttle cable, which is connected by this bracket. And the problem is, is that they have Phillips head screwdriver, uh, Phillips head screws on the end of these things, and they are very prone to stripping out. So wish me luck. things on a strip for sure. Alright, got one. Nice. There we go. Please don't strip. Please don't strip. Please don't strip. Yes. Alright. Got the last one loosened up. We are almost home free. This should slide out. Come on. Get out of there. One nasty set of carburetors have now been removed. Man, these things are nasty. Ugh. All right, now that I got the carbs removed, I wanted to show you guys these base gaskets that these carburetors were sitting on. Man, they're just in terrible shape. Obviously, this was not helping anything. As you can see, you got a chunk of gasket missing out, missing there, there, and pretty much there and there. So that probably didn't help the situation with how this engine was running. So I think I'm going to stop part one here. And then in part two, I hope to get all this cleaned out, degreased. We'll remove the rest of the intake manifolds and remove this jug and start inspecting the crankshaft. And if everything looks good, I'll get a used jug and piston ordered and we'll start putting this thing back together. All right, guys, so long.